you want to buy a car? Hold on for a second. You got to think about your future first. How can you save money? How can you invest that money to let it grow afterwards? But lucky for you, there's definitely a middle ground between being able to purchase a car and save money at the same time. Welcome to my channel. My name is Anton and I'm on a journey to live the most exciting, fun life possible while saving money at the same time. Now, if that's your thing, make sure to like the video and subscribe. We're going to be coming out with videos like this on a weekly basis. So let's get started. So what car should you buy while saving money at the same time this year? I personally found myself in that situation already several times in the past couple of years. The first time I had actually gone through a car crash where my car was completely totaled. Clearly I'm okay. Thanks for asking. Or am I an angel? Anyways, another time I had to buy a car also for my girlfriend. So we were looking and searching for quite a while to get the best deal possible. And few times also helped out a couple of my friends while they were trying to save money to purchase a nice car. Pretty much at the end, it comes down to which one of the four categories do you fit into? Now, at the end, it's kind of like a spectrum of your cheapness. So the level one would be kind of the extremely cheap. Level two would be the cheapest. Level three would be cheap. And level four would be cheap-ish. So, before we get to figuring out which category you actually belong to, it is important that you do not buy a brand new car. If you truly care about saving money, you do have to remember that the car depreciates in value about 30% within the first three years. That's insane. That's just like throwing money into the garbage. Also important to remember that if you finance or lease the car, you're actually paying money for the depreciation on the car. And make sure to stick around all the way to the end of the video as I'm gonna give you a bunch of good tips at the end on what kind of things you should look out for when you're actually purchasing the vehicle. Now let's check out that first category. If you belong to this category number one, which is being extremely cheap, kudos to you. But no joke, what it pretty much means is you actually don't need a car at all. You're either willing to walk, maybe you've invested into a bike that you can actually go around, or you're just able to get around with simply using transit, bus, subway system, whatever is gonna be most convenient to you, or in case you know how to fly, you can definitely do that. Another way, also really easy to get around if you're extremely cheap, is to get a ride from your friends or family. If they're going in the same direction you need to go, jump on it and go for it. Or the worst case scenario, just don't go anywhere. It's gonna save you a lot of money. Now, if you're something within the category number two, which is cheapest, so what you're looking for is a beater car, maybe something under $5,000 approximately. Now in this case, probably the looks of the car and the comfort are not really the priority. Also, it's not gonna go from a zero to a hundred real quick. And there's no bells and whistles. It is just a basic way of transportation. Now the mileage on a beater car, you're gonna be looking at something within the range of 100,000 miles to 175,000 miles, which is a lot, but if you get a good quality car, the car can still be riding really, really well. And the fact that it has a lot of miles on it will not really make a huge difference. Uh, what you're gonna be looking for is something that is clean on the inside, possible wear and tear, and hopefully no major accidents in the past. Also, another really good rule of thumb is ask yourself, can I buy 10 of these cars in cash? And if you can't, you probably shouldn't even go test drive it. Now, before we actually check out my top four pick for the cheapest car, make sure that you understand that these are used cars, they can have some potential problems, so make sure you have a trusted mechanic, check it out first. So, my pick number one, 2008 to 2013 Toyota 
Corolla. Now, this is the car that was built with durability in mind. This is a great choice in case you just want to take your car from home to work to school and back home. The fuel economy is amazing on this vehicle, as well as the insurance rates are pretty low. Now this takes us into my pick number two of the cheapest car, and that's gonna be 2003 to 2006 Toyota Camry. So this model has been around for about 30 years already, and it has great trunk space, and it's definitely bigger than the Corolla. So if you're looking for something a little bit more spacious, this is your pick. And my number three pick for the cheapest car is going to be 2006, 2010 Honda Civic. As we step away from Toyotas a little bit, Hondas become a great substitute. They're reliable, they're great on fuel economy, longevity and durability is insane. And of course, the insurance rates are one of the lowest in its class. Again, as you buy an older model, make sure that you have a mechanic check it out to see for potential problems in the future. As we step into my pick number four for the cheapest car, we actually have an American car lined up. It's gonna be 2008 to 2011 Ford Focus. You get a great four cylinder vehicle that is very inexpensive to maintain because the parts are widely available. Category number three is getting a cheap car. In this case, you're starting to up your game just a little bit, means you're probably willing to spend just a little bit more for the sake of comfort. And of course, in case you live somewhere where it's cold or it snows a lot, you might want to invest a little bit more money into getting a four-wheel drive. As there are smaller cars that come with four-wheel drive, you are more likely to look at something that is a bigger car, maybe like an SUV or a crossover type SUV. Now make sure that the mileage on the cheap car is not more than 150,000 miles. Now let's get to my top four picks of a cheap car. And the first on the list is gonna be 2006, 2012, Toyota Rev4. You can probably tell by now, I kind of like Toyotas. But this car hits a full checklist across space, comfort, reliability. It even comes with all wheel drive and a V6 engine. My pick number two for a cheap car is gonna be 2010 to 2014 Subaru Outback. Now this is an amazing choice if you love to do stuff, whether it's gonna be camping, sports, outdoor activities. The car comes with all wheel drive and roof rails. And it gives you two options, whether you want a four cylinder or a V6, totally your choice. And pick number three for the cheap car is gonna be 2007, 2013, Honda CRV. Now, this is not the best looking car, but you see a lot of these on the road nowadays for a good reason. They are reliable, great space, and low insurance rates. And my last fourth pick for a cheap car is gonna be 2008 to 2010 Lexus LX. So what's cool about this is it's actually an entry-level luxury SUV, even in its basic model. You have the option of an all-wheel drive, and the car is completely packed with high-tech, such as eight-speaker stereo, dual-zone automatic climate control, steering wheel-mounted audio controls, and a bunch, 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 bunch more. Okay, but what if you're like, but sir, with all due respect, all the cars you've mentioned look like rubbish. And of course, the category number four, uh, the car you're looking for is the cheap-ish car. Now, of course, in this case, the looks is somewhat a priority. Even though you're still trying to save money, you will be putting a little bit more now just in order to get something that looks decent, drives well, has good durability and longevity. Also, if you find yourself in this category, you possibly want something with higher performance, means it can go from a zero to 100 real quick this time. And big thanks to depreciation, you can actually find a decent looking modern style cars for somewhat under 15,000. And so my first pick for a cheapish car is gonna be 2013, 2015 Scion FRS. Now, even though Scion has been discontinued in 2013, this specific car still remains one of the top picks in its class. 
Now, even though it's a sports car, you still get pretty decent fuel economy. The car comes with rear wheel drive, so please be very careful in case you're planning to drive in wintry road conditions. Pick two of a cheapish car, in my opinion, would be 2016, 2018, Honda Civic. Now it is by far one of the best sedans hands down, way above its class with the option of a turbocharged engine. My pick number three is going to be 2016, 2017 Honda HRV. Now I know the quality of this car since my girlfriend actually have this specific model and it drives amazing. It's great on fuel economy, it's comfortable and it's just enough space in case you're kind of minimalistic but you like a little bit more space. It is the best subcompact SUV of its class and it comes with one of the nicest interiors and exteriors also. So this is the right car for you if you like a nice balance between a look, comfort, space and reliability. And did I mention insurance rates are mwah. And we come down to my pick number four of a cheapish car is gonna be 2013 Ford Mustang. Now this is a sweet looking muscle car with a V6 engine and better fuel economy than its rivals. If you actually shop around, you can get one with pretty low mileage and you're ready to go. But be careful with your insurance rates in case you're buying a sports car because generally they're a lot higher. As promised, here are a few tips for what to look out for when you're actually buying the car. Number one, if buying in cash, consider purchasing it from a private seller and not a used car lot. Because you're cutting out a middleman, you have potentially a chance to save money and you have more negotiation power. But the risk is they might be hiding some known problems with that car. And to avoid that, check for a current state inspection sticker and ask for records of maintenance and repair. If you can get both, you are most likely in the clear. Tip number two, check what parts have been replaced by the dealer or the seller and which parts you're gonna have to replace yourself. If you are the one who has to change the tires, the transmission, the brakes, the transmission oil, at the end, it's gonna cost you a big, big buck. Tip number three was actually suggested to me by a local mechanic. And what he told me to look out for is making sure that the gaps between the exterior body parts are evenly distributed throughout the whole car. If the gaps are uneven, possibly the car has been through either a car accident or the part has been changed. Tip number four, make sure you check your insurance rates on that car before actually going to purchase or even test drive it. They may really vary depending the state you live in, the country you live in, and even the area in the town. And the tip number five, please consider learning how to drive a stick shift. Now the cars are less popular, therefore you might have more bargaining power when coming to purchasing it. And trust me when I say this, it will actually save you a quite decent amount of money when it comes to purchasing gas with a manual car. And now I would love to hear what cars would you consider buying in 2020 while saving money? Make sure to leave a few suggestions in the comments below and I'm looking forward to checking them out and I'll see you next time.